Sports. We are We are The 3 2. Long drive. Right field. Grand slam. Oh my. Grand slam. Come on. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And will the excitement of last night continue here in game number two? It's the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals on Fox Sports Midwest. With Jim Hayes and Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Delighted to have you with us as we get you set for baseball in our first pitch. Cardinals have played so well this year, trying to make it 65 wins. Best record in baseball. But then you look at what they've done inside the division, Al. That's what really separates them from many. Absolutely. It's very difficult to win the division if you don't have the best record. And the Cardinals obviously have the best record. But look at the Pirates. They're the ones that are chasing the Cardinals, and they have the worst record inside the division. Just one thing to note is after Cincinnati leaves here, they play against the Pirates. And Johnny Cueto, Homer Bailey, and tonight's starter Mike Leake always beat the Pirates. But Cueto is gone, Bailey's out for the season, and Mike Lee could be making his last start of the year. It's Jaime Garcia going for the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. The aforementioned Mike Lee. The Cardinals, the Reds on Fox Sports Midwest.
64 and 35, and a six and a half game lead in front of Pittsburgh, 11 and a half in front of Chicago. Cardinals have dominated the NL Central Division overall. It's the return of Jaime Garcia. Can he stay healthy? When he does, he's productive. He gets the call tonight. We saw Segrist in game one. 96 mile an hour fastball. Trevor Rosenthal, his 31st save and 33 opportunities. After two days off, Trevor was sharp last night. Cardinals look to make it two in a row over the Reds. Baseball, come join next. Forty-eight innings pitched, an ERA of 1.69, and he gets the call tonight for St. Louis. Jason Bourgeois will lead things off for Cincinnati. We've seen him with the Houston Astros among four other teams that he's played for in the big leagues, and he's batting 222 with no home runs and two RBIs. Very productive against Jaime. He is six for 11, four doubles. One ball, one strike. Good to see this man back on the mound. Missed the first 40 games of the season, and then he came back. He's making now tonight his eighth start. There you see the three and three record, but the excellent ERA. You can make a very strong case pitching the best baseball of his career. One one pitch. Make it one and two. The Cardinals a thrilling victory yesterday. And once again, great starting pitching from Lance Lynn, who didn't have his best stuff. Admittedly, he said he did not have fastball command. Colton Wong with the big grand slam, and that's all the Cardinals needed. Of course, the Cincinnati Reds don't want to see Jaime Garcia, who is 10 and 2 against the Reds in his career and 7 and 0 in this ball ballpark. Back to Garcia for the first out of the ball game. The Reds, as a team, right in the middle of the pack in the National League. In terms of their average at 252, in steps Brandon Phillips, he'll bat second, followed by Joey Votto. Then Todd Frazier, Jay Bruce, Suarez, Barnhart, a switch hitting catcher, the pitcher batting eighth, that's Mike Leake, and the speedster and switch hitter Billy Hamilton batting ninth. Brandon Phillips has been much better on the road as opposed to what he's done at the Great American Ballpark. 323. Away from home, just 217 at the Great American Ballpark, and he's out number two. It's one of the reasons why Jaime's been so good is getting so many more ground balls this year. Dobbs Tyron Auto Center's defense for the Cardinals with Holiday in left, Peter Borges in center, 
And Steven Piscotti gets the start in right. Carpenter, Peralta, Wong, and Reynolds along the infield. Good to see Molina back in the lineup. And Reynolds dealing with a sore hand. He was hit by a pitch over the weekend, but gets the start tonight. Here's the red hot Joey Votto. Hitting over 500 since the All Star break. Tremendous on base percentage. You know, whether it's a walk, hit by pitch, or the fact that he hits a 300 hitter, this guy gets on base with the best of them. He has reached base 178 times this year. Second most in baseball. Looks at a strike and it's one and one. On the bench, Marlon Bird, Pena, and De Jesus, along with Skipworth and Skip Schumacher. One ball, one strike on Joey Votto. Anytime that you're mentioned in the same sentence as Pete Rose, you're doing some things right when we're talking about between the white lines. And Joey Votto has reached base two or more times in 14 consecutive games. The all time record is Pete Rose at 17 for the Cincinnati Reds. The 2 1 pitch. First time up last night, ground rule double to right center off the bat of Votto. Just at 241 against Jaime with a couple doubles. Seven for 49. The 3 1. Ball inside, says our home plate umpire, Dan Iasonia. The Hyundai pitch arsenal here for Jaime Garcia. Excuse me, that was seven for 29, but you can see a lot of fastballs, the sliders, the change ups. But the one thing to note with Jaime is everything is down. And the one thing he's doing this year, which he just did do, is walk very few. Remember his first start, he walked five in New York, but he got three double plays after that. Then he went 30 innings without a walk. But he is uh, really. Keeps the ball down and gets so many ground balls now, and his pitch efficiency is so much better. Here's Todd Frazier, who's had an outstanding season. Frazier hitting 274 and leads the Reds in home runs and RBIs. 27 long balls, 67 driven in this year. And in the first inning is when he's done a ton of damage for whatever reason. 25 RBIs coming in the first inning for Todd Frazier. It's kind of surprising, of course, with Frazier getting, or excuse me, with Votto getting on base and head of Frazier. You see why he has the 67 RBIs, but, you know, Phillips has 32 RBIs, Votto has 48, Jay Bruce behind Frazier has 54. So they have a very potent lineup. But admittedly, and the Reds were telling me that it doesn't always show up. No balls, two strikes. Much better at home for Frazier, those numbers. Struck out in a key spot last night with a couple of runners on. As the Reds did have their opportunities, certainly in game one. Here's an 0-2 pitch. And the difference in that ball game is what Colton Wong and the Cardinals did with the bases loaded versus four, five, and six in the lineup. For the Reds with the bases loaded, they just had the sack fly, couldn't get any more. Bases loaded, nobody out. Right. And with, with what, four, five, and six coming up? Lynn improved to eight and five on the season. Gave up a run, five hits, and in seven innings. And the 0 2. Swung on and missed, and a strikeout for Garcia, his first of what he hopes is many tonight. The Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first. His bottom is stranded. No score.
fans still finally in to Bush Stadium. And Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today. Cole Long will lead it off, and he's had quite the homestand. The Grand Slam yesterday, three hits on Sunday, and eight for 20 thus far in the five games. Wong will lead it off, followed by Carpenter and Holiday, then Peralta, Molina, Reynolds, Piscotti, Borges, and Garcia. Very well could be the final start in a red uniform for Mike Lee. A lot of rumors circulating as to whether or not he stays with Cincinnati as they start to unload some of their top players. His numbers on the year, but he is coming off his last three starts, three and zero with a 0 0.82 ERA. So a team might be picking him up at the right time if yes, they do. Sir. Long smokes it into center, and the catch made by Billy Hamilton. On the Cardinals bench tonight, two from the left side, and Dan Johnson and Jason Hayward. Randall Gritchick available to pinch hit. Pete Cosma and Tony Cruz. See Hayward on that list. He is 0 for 13 against Mike Leak, so one of the reasons why he gets a day off. Thirtieth multi hit game last night for Matt Carpenter, who's hitting 255 and takes a breaking ball low. 10 home runs. He's driven in 47 this year. Starting to see little signs of him breaking out. He's had a couple rough months. This has been arguably his toughest month ever that he's had the big leagues, hitting 181 here in the month of July. And June wasn't a whole lot better, but you know, he got off to a great start. You thought he was going to be an MVP candidate. 372 in May. A good month of April. And he falls behind here, one ball and two strikes. You know, he had the two hits last night. The, you know, as you said, his 30th multi-hit game got his average back up to 255. But a far cry, and very strange to see his average that low. And swung on and missed, and a strikeout of Carpenter. The Hyundai pitch arsenal for Mike Leak. Uh, the fastball, but the sinker's the big pitch right there. And the slider, or we call it a cutter, to throw the changeup. He wanted to have more variance in his changeup. It was only about six miles an hour different. You want to get it to 10, and it really hasn't happened. But with the new rules of the batter having to stay in the batter's box, it really works to Leak's advantage because he's a fast worker and he sets the pace. Many Cardinals have good numbers against Leak. The best numbers belong to Matt Holiday. Among active players, at least 30 at bats, he's hitting 385 against Leak with a home run and a pair of strikeouts. 15 for 39. Mike Leak, one of those rare guys that never played a day in the minor leagues. Isn't Red's, that something? Yeah, Red's number one draft pick out of Arizona State. Here's a 1 1. He went to spring training with a big club and made the team and really opened up against the Cardinals. Remember, he was kind of a Bronson Arroyo clone back then. Here's a 1 2. Bronson Arroyo, longtime Red, then signed as a free agent with Arizona, traded then to Atlanta. Tony La Russa, many of the rumors have. The Diamondbacks in on a role as Chapman if they can get him before the deadline. Outfield is deep and a 2 2. Hit down the right field line and out of play. I remember Tony always saying that you have to have a great closer. In his mind, you build from that point and then move forward as you get a look at the Dobbs Tired Auto Center's defense. And he also said if you're going to be a winning ball club, you have to have a good bull bullpen. To win on the road. That was a formula that worked for many years. And you know, there were occasions when you get into a really interesting discussion with Dave Duncan, believing, well, you build from the front end, you build from your rotation. 
And then as you say Tony for the bullpen. Well I think they figured it out. And there are some people with the Reds when I was saying Chapman possibly going to Arizona and they said yeah he'd go there as a starter. Mm. I'm not sure he would though. Almost knocked over Phillips as Holiday is retired in a one two three inning for Mike Leak. We jump ahead to the second. Back to work goes Jaime Garcia. Garcia, as we turn to our Toyota keys to the game with Al Roboski. Well, Garcia returns to the active roster, and you just want him to pick up where he left off. 1.69 ERA. You know, he's been outstanding. 7 0 in this ballpark against the Reds, 10 and 2 lifetime. And the Cardinals need to score four or more. We saw last night another victory, and when they score more than uh, three runs, they're 42 and 8. Here's Jay Bruce and a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Jim Hayes will have a visit coming up with Cardinals GM John Mosellock as we're closing in on the trade deadline for Major League Baseball. That's coming up in the bottom of the second. And the 0-1 pitch. Jay Bruce, his name has been mentioned. Mostly with the Minnesota Twins trying to find a bat. They could use an outfielder as well, and he's hitting 330 this month, so he's hot also at the right time. Just a bit low, two and one. Dan, the Reds, you know, once again besieged by injuries. They've used the disabled list 14 times this year, and only the first five games of the season do the Reds have their 2015 projected lineup. Mm. Two and two. You know, last year it was Votto missing significant time, and you can understand why that would hamper their chances to win. And this year, it's been a collective uh, effort in terms of players getting on the DL. Not where they want to be, but in particular with their starters. Right, and Bruce had to reach for it. Colton Wong from the outfield grass, one away. You know, one of the things, he still can put out a pretty productive lineup but they really have struggled with pitching and particularly you know they got a great closer in Chapman by getting to him bridging the gap and now with so many rookie pitchers in their starting rotation you know that's the same old problem throwing too many pitches not going deep enough into a game and then the Achilles heel of the Reds bullpen the middle relief big loss for them you wouldn't think about it because offensively not huge numbers but a solid player Zach Kozar. Zach Kozar. So now they've got to play Suarez, who's at the plate at shortstop every day. And they like him, but Cozart is an everyday shortstop. Sure. Very good defensively and also, you know, offensive numbers. You can go out there and be competitive. You know what you're going to get. 0 1 pitch, tapped foul.
look at Chris Lee from the Post Dispatch. All the shots that you may see online or in tomorrow's edition of the Post. Thanks to Mr. Lee. Second strikeout for Jaime Garcia. And congratulations to our friend uh, Bernie Miklas, longtime columnist in the Post Dispatch. He is headed to ESPN Radio 101 and He'll still be writing and doing a daily column and all the different things that he can do online, but also hosting a radio show. And he's been a fixture for so many years here in town. So congratulations to Bernie. That's a great job. Amazing writer. Whether you love him or hate him, he makes you think. That's part of what a columnist is supposed to do. He personally love reading him. Does a great job. Nine pitch. Second inning for Jaime Garcia. Who's throwing harder tonight, Garcia or Horton? With his daughter ready to catch it, the first pitch is strike from Rick Horton. His bobblehead night, our good friend. No score midway through two. Reynolds, big couple of days coming up around Major League Baseball. Leak back to work. As Johnny skies one into right center field. It's well hit. Hamilton is back on the track. Puts it away. Let's check in with Jim Hayes. is with Cardinals GM John Mosellock. All right, John. So uh, you guys pull off the trade to help the bullpen getting c -Shack. Cardinal fans want to know what are the chances that there's another deal coming? Well, the good thing is, is we have about four more days to work on this, and uh, you know we're certainly going to explore a lot of different things. But when you look at our club overall, we feel pretty good about it. And, and as we look at some of the other options out there, you know we're not getting to the point where we feel like we're close on anything. But that doesn't mean we're not going to keep trying, and it doesn't mean that we, in the end we won't find something that may help us. What is life like for a general manager as the trade deadline approaches? I'd imagine nonstop. Well, every year is different, but um, when, when you sort of look at this current market, there's a, there's a lot of teams that are still trying to decide which direction they're going. And so from my perspective, we're just trying to keep the pulse of what's happening, trying to make sure we keep the lines of communication open. As far as like how busy we are, and there's moments in the day where it can be very hectic, and there's also some very quiet times. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm, I'm hopeful that there'll be some activity over the next 48 hours, but time will tell. I know you guys are very happy to see Jaime back on the mound. Is he on any sort of shorter leash, or is it just a regular start for him? Well, I'd say we have to be cognizant of, of his pitch count. Uh, his, his outing the other day for Peoria, he was just shy of uh, 65 pitches. So, you know, typically trying to advance him to that 85 or 90 is, is probably a, a safe place to be. But after that, I think we might be uh, looking at uh, a little trouble. So hopefully we can avoid that. On the injury front, Jordan Walden headed to Memphis. I know he's looking to put in back-to-back -back appearances. How soon 
is it likely that he could rejoin the big club? So he'll throw in a game tomorrow, then he would be off on Thursday, then hopefully, uh, and then we may take Friday off and then try to go back to back Saturday, Sunday, and then just try to evaluate him at that point. But he's getting closer, but we still have to be patient about it. Marco Gonzalez, a start from Memphis last night, sort of a, a mixed bag. Is he anywhere close to being where you would like him to be? Well, he's definitely taking a step in the right direction. Uh, as you pointed out, it didn't go quite as well as he had hoped, but he is uh, feeling healthy, and I think that's the most important thing. Mo, thanks. Dan, we send it back to you. All right, quick inning for Mike Lee. Cardinals going in order, six up, six down. Garcia back to work when we come back. West is brought to you by Jack in the Box. If the Cardinals throw nine strikeouts, get a free Monster Taco with any purchase tomorrow at Jack in the Box. Scott Warman, you hear him on Cam OX, and he helps us with our pre and post game shows for both Blues hockey and Cardinals baseball. Is in the crowd tonight, taking it in. Always good to see Scotty here at the ballpark. Here's Mike Leak, and he can swing the bat. Yes, he can. One home run this year. He's got five in his career. The one he hit this year was off of Shelby Miller. A couple of years he's led all pitchers in hits. Just 122 his average, and of his six hits, four have gone for extra base hits. As you mentioned, Ali had the home run. He's also had. Three doubles, a career 234 hitter coming into play this year. And he's two for three with a double off of Jaime Garcia. And I know all the fans really want John Mosaic to go out and make all these deals and everything else, but look at it this way. We got a, we got a new pitcher in Jaime Garcia. Recently, we got a bigger bat than what we could have acquired in the trade with uh, Matt Holiday returning from the disabled list. And when we get those. You know, Walden and Belial and all those guys off the uh, disabled list, they're going to be new arms and fresh arms down there in the bullpen. The 2 1 pitch. I think of concern, though, right now, innings for Michael Walker, who's not been sharp his last three times out. Nice play made by that fan. You're always worried about Walker and Martinez's innings. You don't know about Jaime Garcia. Because of his injury history, and is the bench good enough to win in postseason play? Do they have enough pump coming off that bench? And that swung on and missed for strikeout number three. Well, I think you could really question all those things about the bench. You could question do you need to go out and get a left handed hitting first baseman? I'm going to talk about that. But, you know, the Cardinals are in such great shape because of the historic pitching. 
But as you said, will that continue? And in postseason, is there enough offense here? You know, we have trouble scoring four runs. We say that's the key. If we get four, we win. But, you know, 50% of the time, you're getting less than four runs. One out, nobody on. Here's Billy Hamilton. Late with that swing. Well, that's the thing about Ime. You know, when he's healthy, he's just filthy. And just gets a lot of swing and misses. I think the fact that he missed 40 games at the start of the season, made seven starts. Now he missed 20 more games. There's a line drive into right center. Peter Borges over. Two down. Krispy Kreme dozen deal. If your Cardinals get nine hits tonight, you're invited into Krispy Kreme tomorrow to receive a dozen of their original glazed donuts for only $3.99. Stop by one of the four St. Louis area Krispy Kreme locations for this sensational deal. You know, Jaime is three and three on the year. His ERA currently is at 1.60. He's been shut out three times. But the concern you have about uh, will he finish the season? He has never finished a season with the Cardinals. Big time injuries. And a ball to Bourgeois at the top of the lineup now for Cincinnati. But when he's healthy, he's special. Bourgeois grew up in Houston. His dad was a ticket taker at the old Astrodome. Came up as a second baseman. He's in left field tonight. Did some games down there, right, Dan? Oh, yeah. Old Astrodome. Yeah. Who could forget the fried chicken, Al? Well, <laughs> yeah. Every night. Every night, and what was left over from tonight would be right. available for the next time you were there. But I was going to say, a bourgeois, he grew up there. He's not that big. They had some of the rats that were down underneath the. Bigger than him, were huh? Were about his size. I enjoyed going there. For oh, whatever I reason, too. I don't know why there's certain ballparks I liked. I'll give you a place that I liked that everybody hated, and I loved it. I loved all. going to Shea Stadium. Old Shea? Yeah, I enjoyed that place. Uh, are you talking about the ballpark? Or, yeah. Or New York City? Well, I love New York City. <laughs> the 2-1 pitch. Bree Libby. Taken there by Wong quickly to first base in a nice play. Seven in a row set down by Garcia. MLB.TV Premium for live or on demand on over 400 devices, real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and more. MLB.TV for details. Here's Steven Piscotti. He's five for 16 since he's been called up with a pair of RBIs and takes a ball inside. 
As Al mentioned, Jason Hayward, it's a day off for him, but it fits because he's 0 for 13 against Mike Leake. Well, Piscotty is two for uh, first two major league runs scored. Both came as he was on base during uh, grand slams. Holidays and then Colton Wong's last night. At the RBI on Saturday and John Mosaloc was talking about how when you come here you think as a young player you're ready. Then you walk out into the environment here in St. Louis and you see 40,000 plus. Then you're part of a memorable win. Which it was on Saturday. No doubt. One nothing game. And you realize okay they just turned up the heat on me. The pressure is on me now. This is the big leagues and I'm finally here. And you find out how guys respond to that. And if you don't respond, you go back down. But we've had what 15 call ups from Memphis this year, and everyone has contributed somewhere. Tui Valala was sent back to Memphis as uh, that's how Jaime Garcia was added to the active roster tonight. But he left with a very positive, I'd say more positive than we any time he's been here, and he'll be. Uh, Good insurance down there. And the Cardinals have their first base runner of the night. It's Steven Piscotti. I talked to John Smoltz a couple of weeks ago, Al, about his Hall of Fame speech. And one of the things that he said he was going to bring up was he wanted to talk to parents primarily about getting kids involved in other sports. Don't think that you need to have your son involved or daughter in softball 12 months out of the year. He said we are all oddities up here. Freaks of nature if you will. Slowly hit to the right side and Piscotty advances to second. And I bring that up because Mike Leak, when you watch him pitch or you watch him hit feel the, the position he is an athlete. He was an athlete in high school to the point that he was a kicker defensive back wide receiver played four years of football the point guard on his high school team they say he was an unbelievable all around athlete before he went to Arizona State he played four sports in high school and then like you said right now we've talked about how good of a hitter he is he feels his position extremely well you know as a pitcher you don't have to be an athlete but if you are it's going to make you that much better Garcia chops it up the middle Handled by Suarez, who's committed nine errors this year. Piscotti over to third. As the Cardinals are still in search of their first hit. Now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag MW Data Strong Fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. I, I totally agree with what you're talking about and what John Smolt said. And you know let kids be kids play all sports what you're good at at a young age may not be what you're good at later on and as he said you, your body is not meant to play this sport 12 months out of exactly. the year. exactly and a lot of parents are you know thinking well it's okay if my kid has a Tommy John surgery as a teenager we'll get it over with well you know no it's not that good take care of that arm and Smoltz had it at the age of 32 and the first to have Tommy John to be elected to the Hall of Fame. Right. But you don't need to play in select teams. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Wong. High chopper off the plate. There's Leak off the mound. Fields his position. The Cardinals strand their first runner of the night. We head to the fourth, and there's no score.
as we move to the top of the fourth, the BJC Healthcare Difference Maker. Three season span against the Reds. This is since 1950. The Cardinals 29 and 16. As a matter of fact, the Cardinals have just dominated this series. Last 16 matchups in terms of series, Cardinals are 14 and 2. They've won nine straight at home. The last home series loss against the Reds was back in 2011. And if the Cardinals can win tonight, that would give them seven straight wins over the Reds for the first time since 1981. Seemed like the Cardinals have their number no matter if they play here or there. Phillips on the first pitch, grounded out to short. And looks at a ball, and we're underway here in the fourth inning. I'm not sure you would agree with this or fans, but I look at the next two months, potentially the two biggest months for Jaime Garcia in his career up to this point. And the reason I say that, if you look at the schedule, let's just say he pitches every fifth day and you work in the off days. Garcia is looking at roughly 11 to 13 starts remaining in the regular season. If he can stay healthy and if the Cardinals then make it into postseason and he has a nice run, the Cardinals are looking at whether or not they pick up club options for 16 and 17 or cut them loose and all of a sudden he could be in line for a big payday. So it could pay off for both Garcia and the Cardinals if he does very well here down the stretch. You know, in his career, he is 45 and 29. And like we said, pitching his best baseball this season. But he's never finished a season healthy. So that's another indication, like you said, that he has to establish that he can do that. There's a base hit into right for Joey Votto. And again, on base twice tonight. And that is 15 consecutive games that he's done that. Help Fox Sports Midwest and the mission continues with our summer service slam. Team up with the veterans at the Jackie Joyner Kersey Center this Saturday. They'll build a playground, library, and more. If you'd like to volunteer, visit missioncontinues.org slash summer service slam. You agree with that, though? Yes, I really do. And and if he can stay healthy, you know, whether the Cardinals want to pick up those options, they're very club-friendly. Or if he tests the free agent market out there, he has to show clubs that he can stay healthy. He's already been on. He's already missed 60 games this year. But if he can, as you said, make those final 13 starts, becomes very intriguing. Well, when he's healthy, you know he's he's always been a winner, and he's just swing and miss stuff. Now he's getting more and more ground balls, going deeper into games. You think about the ground ball here because Frazier is hit into a team high 11 double plays. Frazier was talking about uh, yesterday extremely hot yesterday today but after the rain went through last night it was one of the best days they've had playing on the field. Man was it hot though this afternoon. Oh yeah and then this game today you know after the rain that hit here. What, around 4:30, 5 o'clock, something like that, and you know the game time temperature is about 83 degrees. 83 degrees in July, you know, we'll take that any time. Other than the 110 heat index we had this afternoon. Oh, one pitch, hit out of play. Todd Frazier struck out first time up. Garcia struck out three. Frazier leads all Major League third baseman in home runs and hits this year. So league uh, total base leader and off to a tremendous start. Possibly the first 40 home run, 40 double player in their history. And an 0 2 pitch taken high. The Cardinals talk about it so much in. We visited with Molina and Cruz about this. Garcia can be one of the toughest in baseball to catch because he has such great natural movement on all his pitches. At times, you really have to concentrate and really 
you can't take your eye just assuming that ball's going to be because you got that late movement and very difficult to center. Two balls and two strikes. Mentioned earlier, good to see Molina back in the lineup. Did go through concussion tests after the game last night. Took a foul ball directly off the helmet. And then it was so hot, and it was hot here at the ballpark with no air conditioning throughout the afternoon, throughout the ballpark. Out in front, how about two? Garcia in a second. Double play. One, four, three on the double play. The first turn by the Cardinals tonight. Frazier grounds into his 12th double play this year. Kids love this game. And enjoying that at Kirkwood Park. That's how it all begins. You never know. Maybe one of those youngsters will be out here someday. Cardinals no score. Bottom of the fourth. Let's check in with Jim Hayes. And for a guy who hasn't been a major leaguer for all that long, Colton Wong has had more than his share of big moments. Hit his second career grand slam last night for his career. Wong hitting 318, 7 for 22 with the bases full and 20 ribbies. Wong told me for whatever reason, he's more disciplined, a more disciplined hitter in key situations. He says he just takes more under control at bats. He told me. It's about laying off pitches out of the zone, and if he gets a fastball like he did last night, drive it. Dan, he says that's his approach for pretty much every at bat. He says he's just more focused in those key moments, and hopefully he'll have another key moment tonight. Jim, we were talking about Matt Carpenter coming into play tonight. 181 his average here in the month of July. As he goes, many times the offense goes. If you talk to him about the recent struggles. Yeah I have and and he maintains that physically he's fine. He says mentally he's confident uh, that by the end of the season his numbers will be right about where he thinks they should. He said you just got to keep grinding because there are ups and downs and he thinks he'll get out of this Dan. Votto to Leak covering the bag at first. Mike Leak is yet to allow a base hit. Chevy Fox tracks the last pitch to Carpenter. Try to set up inside. He misses his location or a little bit inside, but pulled it, gets the ground ball, and said leak. We mentioned earlier his last three starts, three and 0, 0.82 ERA, just two earned runs at 22 innings. With 18 strikeouts, just three walks, and no home runs. He has allowed 14 home runs on the year. He'll give up his fair share. You'll see that by the end of the season. Takes the ball though every fifth day. 
and will give you a chance to win. He's not overpowering by any means, but a very serviceable plus major league starter. Yeah, he, he's a ground ball guy, you know, but occasionally and he's in a very small ballpark there in Cincinnati, so the home runs come at times. Inside to Holiday, grounded out sharply to second base. You know, home runs. Seven different Cardinals have hit a home run off a of leak. Holiday, Molina, Carpenter, Adams, Wong, Reynolds, Cruz, and Peralta. Last time the Cardinals saw Mike Leak was in late April. He was terrific in that start on April 19th. Only four hits, two earned in eight innings. And right now he is sharp. One and two the count on Holiday. Big gap in left center field. And he took something off it and he strikes out Matt Holiday for the second strikeout tonight. July 31st, celebrate the best trade in Cardinals history. You see, we've got the blue uh, Lou Brock bobblehead on the trade deadline. And why not? It makes a lot of sense. Best trade in Cardinals history, presented by Lindenwood University, peeling off the Cubs jersey, putting on that Cardinal jersey, Lou Brock bobblehead coming up courtesy of Lindenwood. Lou and uh, Jackie Brock have done an awful lot for Lindwood. Well, Mo decided to have his interview with Jim and then he moved to the front row. Backhanded by Suarez. Leak is not allowed to hit through four. Red Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and there's no score. He allowed a base hit. Garcia just won. It'll be Jay Bruce, Suarez, and Tucker Barnhart against Garcia. You now, Dan, uh, Major League Baseball told the umpires to call a lower strike zone this year. And that's one of the things they said Mike Leake is really taking advantage of. And I, and I think maybe it's part of the reason why Jaime has gotten uh, a lot more ground balls this year. It was designed to get more offense but it's helped the pitchers. First pitch to Jay Bruce. Something that Major League Baseball is looking at is trying to bring up the zone. Here's an 0 1 pitch. 
in my mind, if you raise the strike zone, it would increase the offense. That's the idea. But they had a directive early in the season to lower the strike zone, and I think it's it's been counterproductive. But if you raise the strike zone, the guys that can throw the ball above the strike zone would be fine. But more pitches up, more offense. New commissioner Rob Manfred has talked about that with his top lieutenants and those around the game in the front offices. Are you as a fan concerned about a lack of offense and pitching dominant? Some are, some aren't. I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's I mean, all personal preference. I think we would all love to see the Cardinals pitch as well as they have, but, but would love to see increased offense from the Redbirds. So we'll keep our pitching staff intact, and but we're going to score. The Cardinals can have both. If I was commissioner, the two two else. swung on and missed in strikeout number four. This will give you an idea, and just listen to some of these numbers as Garcia picks up the strikeout of just how good the starters have been for the Cardinals, in particular at home. They haven't allowed more than three earned runs in 25 home starts. The last 25 consecutive. Second longest streak in team history. The starters ERA in that time. 1.61. That's just an incredible run here at Bush Stadium by these starters. And the time the other time was 68. And that was when Bob Gibson had the 1.12 ERA. Round ball sharply hit to third taken there by Carpenter. Suarez is out number two. This man always has fun at the ballpark cheering on his teammates. He's fun to watch when he's pitching. He's smiling joking around. He's energy with this club like we said he's really matured. But uh, you're right I mean. He's all business now when the day he pitches, but he's the number one cheerleader on the other days. I think Carlos is pretty concerned that Waka and that right foot may just edge its way. Yeah, right yeah. there. Edge its and way over it and knock it over. Uh huh. There it comes. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Tucker Barnard. And a ground ball that's hit to Colton Wong. One, two, three, go the Reds. Better watch it, Carla. Oh! <laughs> Better watch it. No score midway through five.
League Central Division. You look at the first place finishes for St. Louis and Cincinnati, and neither club has finished in last place. Cincinnati, it could happen this year. Reds right now, a half game in front of Milwaukee for the basement of the NL Central Division. Yeah, Cincinnati won the division the first year. You saw the Cardinals dominate Houston. Remember, they were there until they moved to the American League. They won four Central Division crowns, but the Cardinals have really been the class of the Central Division. Beautiful shot there of St. Louis and the skyline and another big crowd on a hot night at Bush Stadium. And there's a strike to Yachty or Molina. I was a little surprised that Yachty was in the lineup today. You know, he wanted to be in there, but you know, he hasn't really hit uh, leak very well to. 59. And Tony Cruz is five for nine with a home run. And with Yachty coming out of that game last night, it seemed like a perfect time to give Tony another start. One and two the count. It was a trade that shocked the baseball world late last night. Former Rocky shortstop Troy Tillowitzki going to the Toronto Blue Jays as Molina lines it to his good buddy Brandon Phillips. Saturday, August 1st, 12,000 kids, 15 and under, entering with a ticket, receive their own Build a Bear workshop bear featuring the alternate jersey. And that will also be photo day. And the former Rocky will see his former team coming to St. Louis on Saturday, August 1st. Troy Tillowitzki, Latroy Hawkins to Toronto in exchange for Jose Reyes, the former Met. And three minor leaguers, one of them, or rather two of them, can hit triple digits on the gun. Rockies will save roughly 45 to $50 million as part of that deal. And I think what's interesting is that Toronto, you look at what they need, it's pitching. They are 23rd in baseball. Team ERA is over four. So they do get a little help in their bullpen with Hawkins. But their lineup, man, oh, man, they've got some thumpers. Yeah, they're just going to try to out, outscore you, mash you. But Tulewitzki, a tremendous talent. But some people, you know, around baseball just say he can't stay on the field long enough or play often enough to be, the, uh, you know, the real value. But when he's healthy, he's tremendous talent. A 3-1 pitch to Reynolds. Which I find curious to follow up your point is that you're going to a field and a ballpark that's considered a tough field to play on that turf the turf at Rogers Center and players aren't used to it today. So you know the players of the, of the past that played in the multi purpose stadiums really took a toll on their body and playing on that turf every day. A 3 2 pitch. Reynolds with a fly ball into center. Did you know that the StubHub app is personalized just for you? Now with the StubHub app, you can select your favorite teams and artists and discover new ones too. The official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals is StubHub. Think about some of the names, though, Al, in this lineup. Edwin Encarnacion, Jose Bautista, Russell Martin, Josh Donaldson, Justin Smoke, and now Troy <laughs> Tulowitzki. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. I remember some of the teams we used to play, you know, when you played against the Atlanta Braves or the Pirates, you know, you you knew that uh, you were going to have to score maybe six, seven runs. And if you did, you were going to win seven to six, six to five. Those type of games. Here's a one one pitch to Steven Piscotti. There's the Cardinals first base hit of the night served into right field by Piscotti. Scotty the only Cardinal base runner tonight. He walked his first time up in the third in the lead off and now he gets a two out base hit and a good solid pitch away. And it looks like the Piscotti we used to see in spring training is that line drive hitter that would hit the ball all over the field. If you're the Rockies, you're getting the, the hard throwers back. You wonder if that's now their mindset, trying to redo their club. And, you know, they've gone with sinker ballers. They've yeah. gone with big free agents. 
Well, you know, and now they're talking about trading cargo too. Two outs and a runner at first as Borges just got a piece of that for a strike. Grounded out to second, first time up. Russell Martin and Tulowitzki will be the only Blue Jays under contracts with guaranteed deals after 2017. Here's an 0 1. Gives you an idea, too, I think, Al, of just how well the Blue Jays have drafted. I mean, think about some of the players that they've given up, like a Syndergaard, this trio of, of young pitchers to get a Tulowitzki. Some pretty good players they've had along yeah. the way. Piscotti is running, hit left side. Frazier makes the play. Garcia left on deck. We played five, and there's no score from Bush Stadium. Stadium in St. Louis. Arkea in the driver's seat. The starters ERA at home this year 1.71. I mentioned earlier the last 25 games here at Bush Stadium. It's 1.61. Kia in the driver's seat. And Dan, that was Garcia coming into today's action, and now his overall ERA is down to 1.53 for the year. You think she wants to share that with her kids? I mean, come on. The pitcher spot Mike Leake and Billy Hamilton and Jason Bourgeois. And strike one. And the cups and the collection just gets a little bit higher with ooh, every inning is Pete Cosma. Maybe trying to disrupt that. Carlos is trying to hydrate today, right? Keeping track of how many drinks he's had. As you talked about, the big issue with Garcia can he stay healthy? 2008, Tommy John. Rotator cup surgery in 13. Thoracic outlet surgery in 14. And tonight, once again, as we've seen here in 15, he is dealing. And Dan, the one thing is, you know, the pitch count coming back, and they're saying about to 85 would probably be his limit coming off the disabled list. He's at 55 here tonight, mm -hmm. and, you know, pitching in the sixth inning. So extremely economical. Here's an 0-2. And a base hit for Mike Lee, served into right field. 
The second hit tonight for Cincinnati. What's on tap? John Lackey going for win number 10 tomorrow. He's been very good at home. And we'll come your way at 6.30 with our pregame show presented by Budweiser. It's our What's on Tap. And don't forget how good Lackey has been. This is where it gets interesting here with Billy Hamilton as your ninth place hitter. He has nine bunt hits this year. Been swinging a very good bat. 345 is average. For the last uh, two weeks. As the Reds are trying to get a man into scoring position. But he opens up all the hitting lanes because of his speed, the potential of the bunt. You're holding a runner at first. Carpenter has to play in at third. He has 46 deals to lead the major leagues. Billy Hamilton, the Cardinals as a team, have 48. But, you know, we sometimes the younger viewers may not realize or know how good Vince Coleman was. Recently, it was it was middle of June. He had five steals for a single game club record for the Reds. Nice play by Molina. And in that fifth steal of that game was his 100th of his career and his 219th appearance. The fastest to the mark since Vince Coleman, who swiped his 100th career base in his 135th game. So you're telling me he's fast? He's fast, and Vince Coleman was faster. Vince Coleman got on base. Hamilton struggles with that. Garcia spins and they make the play. Whoa, is that close? Nice play by Colton Wong. A very tough play for Garcia. Very good at both ends. Jaime had to get to that ball, spin and throw out a speedy runner. And then, as you say, Colton Wong has to receive a throw with a runner barreling down on it. And it's so close right there. You're afraid to stick your arm too much into the base path. Seeing guys get into their shoulder significantly. And he was able to grab that ball and pull his arm back as quick as possible. Probably at the last second you lose sight of that baseball sure. too. Yeah, you kind of. This is where I think it's going to be. <laughs> you know, both these teams average just over four runs a game. Almost identical in that spot where the Reds have struggled this year. Runners in scoring position as a team 210 their average which is the lowest in all of Major League Baseball. Bourgeois is over two. They have their first man in scoring position tonight. Tapped foul. If the Cardinals can win tonight, be the first team since Detroit in 2006 to reach 65 wins in their first 100 games. So that's the kind of season that they're putting together here. It hasn't been done in 10 years to get to 65 wins in 100. Yeah, the Cardinals have won 37 out of the first uh, 50 home games. Popped up right side Reynolds giving chase foul territory and he cannot make the play. Good effort looked like he smothered it against his chest but uh, eventually dropped it. Let's take a look at it basket catch and then it bobbles. And he loses it. One ball, two strikes. Garcia has walked one tonight. He has struck out four. He's allowed just two base hits. Took something off it and a strikeout of Bourgeois.
Now at McDonald's, get any size McCafe or smoothie for just $1.99. Even those booze for Phillips aren't too. Well, for as much as uh, he hears the booze, which he does enjoy, by the way, he told me here in St. Louis, he also said this is the best baseball city in America. And I know our fans, we know why they dislike him, but he is a very likable guy. And he is one of the real ambassadors for the game of baseball. Revered in his town and the people that do take the time to get to know him and realize that he's a young man that really uh, caters to the fans and has a lot of things in the community. Here's a 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. He's one of the names that you hear about that could be moved as he's getting older, though, and owed a lot of money. The Reds would have to swallow a good portion of that contract. Runner at second is Mike Leak. Two outs, one ball, one strike. Make it one and two. You know, Dan, earlier in the year, it seemed like Brian Price, the manager of the Reds, was under a lot of heat. But lately, I think people have come to the conclusion that this team just isn't good enough. And it's. it's Back on the players and the organization that some people think they're going to have to just blow it up and start all over. Here's a one two in the dirt, kept in front by Molina. Well, when you do uh, the trade that they just pulled off with the Royals in sending Cueto, that's a big piece that they're saying goodbye to. Phillips, Bruce, Chapman. Leak, now potentially even Votto. Now Leak's a free agent after this year. 2 2. Hit out of play. Well, I think they find his name out there on the trade rumors. Speaking of the Royals, they were back at it again as you see the nine game hitting streak currently in the National League for Phillips. The Royals acquired the Services of Ben Zobris today from the A's. They picked up a couple of minor league pitchers. Ned Yost was saying that he would play Zobrist in left field. He can play any position. Right. And he would bat him sixth and play him in left field. And it was Aaron Brooks and a left handed pitcher, Sean Manaya. Yeah, how many lefties do they have in their minor leagues? Gave up four. three to get yeah. Cueto. And one more, so it's four. The 2 2. Remember, Gordon's still out for a while, and then Zobris could go and replace Infante, who got his first home run last night. That's good for baseball. I mean, how many times do we say the Royals are out of it this time of year? Now that they're going all in. You got a chance. You got to go for it. You bet. 3 2 pitch. Just missed on the inside corner. And then you have the, the Cardinals, who it seems like every single year, Jaime did not like that call. We're going to better look at it here. And we'll see. It was a good call by the home plate umpire, and Iasonia. Second walk. You certainly did not want to walk Phillips to bring up Votto, who right now is swinging a hot, hot, hot bat. 384 in July, over 500 since the break. He's been on base twice tonight with a walk and a single. It's a little unorthodox, but uh, Frazier is 0 for 2. He's just 2 for 16 on deck against Jaime Garcia. I know where you're going. You, yeah. you, you pitch carefully. If you walk right. him, you walk him. You're right, exactly. Not two outs. You know, you. Don't want to give in to him and just put a cookie up there. 1 0 pitch. Votto with a fly ball out to deep center field. Borges is back at the track at the wall and it's gone. 
three run homer Joey Votto pitch carefully he may have regardless three nothing Cincinnati 19th home run RBI is 40 nine fifty and fifty one it's only the fourth home run allowed by Garcia this year but it is a costly one right there and you see I may not happy for himself and that ball looked like the left hand hitter center cut down in the middle of the plate and he took it back over the middle but over the wall in center. I'm sure what he's more frustrated with though is the walk right to Phillips to bring up the opportunity for Votto. But you know what Dan you got to be careful too that you aren't still thinking about that walk and make a careless pitch to a dangerous hitter. And I and I know you and Ricky last night were talking about Votto and some of his things. That's why you were upset with him bunning last night because you know what he can do swinging away. Deep in the hole and off the glove of Peralta Frazier on his way to second base. Base hit they played into a double not intentionally. Matt Carpenter tonight's third baseman for the Cardinals was on the line so a long way to go to range to his left couldn't get there and off the glove of Peralta Frazier at second base. You know, when you have a left handed pitcher that throws so many off speed pitches like Jaime Garcia you would think a lot of these right handed batters are going to pull the ball. Jay Bruce. It's like when the Cardinals talk about 85 with when you had John Tudor on the mound you had to have a Ozzie Smith and a Terry Pendleton on that left side because they were getting a high volume of balls hit to them with so many off speed pitches. Tudor, McGrain, Matthews. You know, with the Cardinals, you never feel like they're out of it, being away but getting loose. They fell behind one to nothing last night, eventually came back, won the game. They've had 30 comeback wins this year, most in Major League Baseball. And the thing about the Cardinals too is they are not relying on one guy. It's really a team effort. Two strikes on Jay Bruce, who's 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. Talked about how the pitching is historic, but from position-wise, only Grichik would you say is having a career year, and that's not real fair because he's, you know, really playing his first full year. So you don't know what his normal is. Everybody else is, you know, either. In their normal stats or or below. This may be it for Jaime Garcia. As John Moselog told Jim, they're going to keep an eye on the pitch count. It's close to 80. His spot is due up first for the Cardinals. Looking ahead to the bottom of the sixth. Very good point, Dan. I think that's uh, fair to say. You know, it's seen this sixth inning. He's laboring with 26 pitches. And everything else. Remember, we talked about it. It's right at like 51 or so. At the start of this inning. 52. Some of these pitches now been up. Indication when you. you know, start tiring a little bit your legs go and when your legs go you don't have that drive so the ball starts elevating. Elevating gets more hittable. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at second is Frazier. That's skied into shallow right field. Colton Wong is near the line, under it, and makes the play. Red Strand, their second of the night, but one pitch may have changed the game for good. Three run to Homer, Joey Votto.
Brian Dozier an all star for the twins with 21 then Colton Wong Robbie Cano has picked it up for Seattle and that'll be it for Jaime Garcia strike to Dan Johnson and we're underway here in the bottom of the sixth and they gave up four hits three of them in that faithful sixth inning Johnson slow roller up the first baseline for the first out it's the only third time Garcia's allowed three earned in a start in his last ten and once again the the positive is he goes six innings he's been giving you six innings every time out at least right with his three runs earned tonight his ERA shot up to two top of the lineup in Colton Wong breaking ball and a strike Wong is lined out to center and hit back to the pitcher. Broken bat, little looper, and a base hit into left. Cole Wong now one for three and against the Central this year. Look what he's done against Chicago, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. He struggled against Milwaukee. But 350 is average against the Cincinnati Reds. By the way, Matt Carpenter came into play 429 against Cincinnati this year. I would think uh, those numbers against Milwaukee are going to change by the time the season's over and change for the positive. A pickoff and Wong back in safely. The pick there by Joey Votto, former Gold Glover. Carpenter is struck out and grounded out. If the Cardinals can't answer with some runs this inning. You know we talk about the struggles of Carpenter here in the month of July and yes he is getting better. The one thing though is that when he goes into a prolonged slump. He still can walk to get on base and score runs. He has 12 walks this month to lead the club. Two balls no strikes holiday on deck and then I'm a believer that when you start walking on a frequent basis you're starting to see the ball better you're starting to get your timing back and and then you'll see the average start picking up big hole on the right side of the infield I like to see a ball hit right down the left field line. The Nationals have picked up former Phillies closer Jonathan Papelbon. They've also picked up the option for next year to make sure that that deal went through. So Papelbon immediately, and this was part of the deal too, was told he will be the closer. Yeah, I was going to say that was speculation. And Drew Storen, uh, good teammate, you know, will set him up. So there were a lot of people that said that. They didn't think Papelbon one would put up with being the eighth inning guy or two could he take the wear and tear on the body of getting up and down. You know where the eighth inning or ninth inning you know in today's baseball you get the guy up and he goes in the pitch. Two balls two strikes and Storen was having a, a tremendous season yes. too. Yes. So 29 of 31 in the save department 1.73 ERA. The 2 2 pitch. Carpenter hits it to the right side. Phillips ranging to his left. And he makes the play and in steps Holiday. I know he's a good teammate. We've had the chance to visit with him. But this is the third time Drew Storen has been demoted. I mean, you're a closer. You're having a great year. And again, it's about the team and winning games. But still, that's tough to swallow. Yeah, and it really is. And, and I, I was really happy because, you know, he had the game against the Cardinals and the game against, was it Oakland? Where he had problems in San Francisco, San, you know, San Francisco, yeah, and everyone wants to concentrate on that. But you know, in between, he's been outstanding, and he's still really a young player. So he, he'll get his day, and but there's other people around baseball will take note of that, and they'll remember that sometime when he's a, when he's up 
and his contract is due that you're getting a guy that uh, understands sometimes there's a numbers game. Here's Holiday who is 0 for 2. Nationals give up their number 12 prospect, a right handed pitcher who was at double A. Doesn't sound like a lot. The 2 0 pitch. And Holiday pops it up into shallow right. Long way to go for Jay Bruce. And he'll get there. Cardinal strand a runner, their third. We head to the seventh. Are you keeping score? Three nothing. Promised earlier in the game, the Dana Strong fan photo of the night. You can tweet us your photos at hashtag MW Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Suarez, Barnhart, and Leak. Carlos Villanueva is your new pitcher. He hasn't pitched since uh, July 19th when he pitched four innings. That was versus the Mets in that game. Four innings, five hits allowed, one run it was earned, three walks, three strikeouts. He's got the 13th best National League relief ERA with 177. And he's done a nice job for the Cardinals as their extended long man that doesn't get used very often. And sometimes, you know, in the postseason with a three and three record. It's been over a week since we've seen him. 19th. How tough is that to stay sharp? To me, it's very tough, but it seems like these guys today don't really bother them. They can come out and throw strikes. People say, well, you get your work on the side. It doesn't work that way, especially when you come into a 45,000 people and your adrenaline is quite a bit different. One ball, one strike on Suarez. The line for Jaime Garcia, six innings, three runs. Four hits, struck out four, walked two, gave up the home run to Votto. And line doesn't really indicate how well he pitched the first five innings. Off the end of the bat, it's popped up. And this will drop. It's a base hit, and it's a fair ball. So, leadoff hit for Suarez. And it brings in Tucker Barnard. First five innings for Garcia, he only had one hit allowed. Tiring a little bit there in the sixth inning. Novato gets him for the three run home run. Here's the ball that just falls in. Beats the Bermuda Triangle. Right hand of batter. You can see why that ball fell in. No Cardinal defender could get to it. Angels have been busy last couple of days. There's Tucker Barnhart, the switch hitting catcher. It's his best side, left side. Over 300 from this side of the plate came in 105 against lefties. 
the Angels got Shane Victorino from Boston for Josh Rutledge, middle infielder. Then today, David Murphy of Cleveland for shortstop Eric Stamets, double A shortstop. But they also picked up David De Jesus from Tampa Bay for Eduardo Lopez, right handed pitcher and rookie ball. So they're going for it too. Yep. Why not? And that's why you marvel at the Cardinals that every year they're in you know, postseason contention and usually there. And if you're going to make deals, you have to have prospects, you have to have a deep system. I remember when Tony LaRusso first came to the ball club and Walt Jockey here, you know, they traded all the minor league players for major league players. You can only do that for so long and then you run out of prospects. But then they started stockpiling the the prospects and finding a way how to develop your own and winning with your own players. Here's a 2 0 pitch and a double play ball out at second the turn by Wong double play second double play turned by the Cardinals tonight this one going six four three. And I think that's the key to most ball clubs will say that you have to develop your own and then occasionally augment it with a free agent or a you know a trade here and there. Hyundai pitch arsenal for Carlos being to wave up. Fastballs and predominantly sliders. Just on this home stand alone is Mike Leak will be the hitter with two outs and nobody on. Cardinals seeing their opponents and key pieces being traded. Obviously in this series no Johnny Cueto he'll make his Royals debut on Friday night. Atlanta traded Uribe and Kelly Johnson to the Mets. And then uh, to the whiskey, no right. longer part of Colorado. A fly ball lifted into right. Piscotti back to make the catch. Time to stretch. Game two, the Cardinals and the Reds on Fox Sports Midwest. Run the Gateway Honda dealers donate a thousand dollars to the Make a Wish Foundation. We take a look at the Mazda game summary, and it's three to nothing, Cincinnati. Mike Leake has allowed just two hits. The big blast was Joey Votto with a three-run homer. He's been on base three times. We're at the bottom of the seventh, three nothing, Cincinnati. Part of the reason the Cardinals have had. Some of the tremendous comebacks that they've had this year. Bullpen keeps them in games. And then you've got to have dramatic hits. Johnny Peralta's had his handful of those. And he's hitting 356 the seventh inning or later, which is third best in the big leagues. Yeah, he's been tremendous that way. He's got 12 game winning RBIs. 
ties his career high and puts him right there with the league leaders. It's tied for first in Major League Baseball with those 12 game winners. Here's a 1 0 pitch taken low. Two balls, no strikes. The Cardinals are 4 and 1 on this homestand, but yet they've only hit 220 as a team. As Peralta hits it sharply to short. And Johnny is hitless tonight. So you had just two hits on Saturday, only two here tonight. Most multi RBI hits for game winning RBIs in 2015. The Yankees, they had a ton of home runs. Cardinals with 21, Blue Jays with 20. You're talking about like a one grand slam. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, Yachty's three uh, three run triple. In the right, there's Jay Bruce. Mike Lee just continues his dominance. Last four starts. Came in with his last three with an ERA under one. Pitching the best baseball of his career. And Jay Bruce flags this one down in the corner. Downstairs before the game, we were on the field, and there are a ton of scouts watching the action tonight, taking a hard look, especially at Mike Leak. Reynolds with a base hit into left. And that's past Bourgeois. Mark Reynolds on his way to second base with a double. Only the third Cardinal hit tonight. And the first extra base hit for the Cardinals. Comes at two outs and mimicking, I guess, he's looking for oxygen. Who would it be? Adam Wainwright. Who has told anybody that will listen, he thinks he'll <laughs> be able to pitch this year. That's right. Pitch up in the zone and Reynolds hammers it. Now five for 14 off of Mike Leak with a home run. Piscotti has walked and also singled to right. That pitch is hit out of play. He's now six for 17 to begin his big league career. Pittsburgh and Minnesota tied at 2 2. That's in the top of the sixth. Mike Pelfrey going for the Twins. Charlie Morton got the start for the Pirates. Pirates 4 and 6 since the break. Minnesota 2 and 6. Got to pick up this run, don't you? Yep. 1 1. And Piscotti out in front just a bit. A fly ball into left in front of the track. The catch made by Billy Hamilton. St. Louis is stranded four on the night. We head to the eighth.
Southwest. Let's head to our studio in a Bomberito sports update. Teams like Chicago trying to figure out are we in or, or are we out? Do we have enough to get to the wild card? Do we hold on to Samarja? Chicago tied with Detroit, 12 and a half games back of Kansas City, so the division you would think out of reach. Crazier things have happened, but the wild card, they got a shot. Here's Billy Hamilton. I think the wild card and then adding the double wild card has been just great for baseball. Keep fan interest. Well, think about it, Al. I mean, if you were, let's say, the Chicago Cubs, you're 11 and a half games out. You're not playing very good baseball. And if you don't have the wild card, you're a long shot. Exactly. I'm with you. I think the wild card has been extremely good for the game and popular. And adding the second wild card has added more excitement to it. And I, and I think they uh, tweaked it in the right direction with having the double wild card playoff play in game. Because, you know, to me, wild card teams were going through because they were just playing that pressure baseball at the end of the season and almost had a free pass to. Go late into the postseason. And if things are lined up, and it doesn't always happen this way, but if things are lined up where your number one would get that first start in a playoff series of five games, that means they go in one, they go in five, and instead, now they have to play in that wild card play in game. Right. So it penalizes you as a wild card team and rewards the division winners. Three and two here on Billy Hamilton. Outfield extremely shallow. And it's popped up. Carpenter calling for it. One out. Our right, lows never stop improving. It's not just about the starting pitching, but about the relievers as well. They've had a tremendous season. Last five teams with bullpen ERAs below 1.92 in the first 50 home games. Cardinals, Dodgers of 1992, Oakland in 1990. Being a wave is a prime example of why the Cardinal bullpen is so good. You know, as mentioned earlier, the Reds have a lot of trouble getting, you know, to Chapman where their middle relief is kind of has their problems. Their young pitchers aren't going deep enough into games. Well, being a wave is, you know, he came into this action and now he's retired four batters. And you know he came in with a 1.77 ERA. And he saves you innings. Yeah. Think about that game on a, a Sunday afternoon, a couple of weekends ago, and he's able to basically pitch what would be like Jaime start tonight, right around 80 pitches in relief. The 1-1. One -one. Bourgeois ground ball that's hit to short. Peralta up with it, two down. Once again this Friday it's the Lou Brock bobblehead celebrate the best trade in Cardinals history 25,000 fans ages 16 and older receive a one of a kind Lou Brock bobblehead courtesy of Lindenwood University. My understanding is we'll have a chance to visit with Lou Brock on Friday night he'll be in the booth. Sure you will and so I mentioned that uh, your alma mater Lindenwood but uh, Jackie and Lou Brock were on the board of directors of Lindenwood. They've done an awful lot for the sports programs out there. That is a beautiful campus. Two outs and a ball to Phillips. Lou Brock Sports Complex in the baseball facility is second to none. I was out there when they had the dedication of the statue, and I couldn't believe, you know, how prestigious it is now. And 
go every media outlet in our town and there's representatives of Lindenwood all over the place. Mm -hmm. Two and oh the count on Phillips. Now three and oh. Big series with the Angels and Astros tonight. Houston a game back of Los Angeles at the American League West and it's six to five. That pitcher's duel in the fifth. And Houston leads in that game. I wonder if the Houston fans remember Albert Pujols. <laughs> How could you not? <laughs> American League wild card if it ended today, Houston would be in. Minnesota would be in. Baltimore three games out. Tampa Bay three and a half along with Toronto. Nice play by Peralta. A little tricky hop there at the end. And it's six up, six down for Carlos Villanueva. Leap back to work. Reds on top. Fox Sports Midwest brought to you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it all. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Last two times the Cardinals were shut out by the Reds. Just a season ago, once was at Cincinnati, Johnny Cueto. And the other time was this pitcher here, Mike Leak. That was in St. Louis. Going to the count on Borges. 0 for 2 tonight. Hayward on deck. I mentioned he's 0 for 13 against Mike Leak. Well, you'd love to get Tony Cruz up there. He's 5 for 9 with a home run against Leak. The one two in the dirt two balls two strikes Pittsburgh has picked up a run they have their first lead over Minnesota three to two Colorado all over the Cubbies five to one that's at the bottom of the sixth. I remember the fireworks they had in the ninth inning last night. Daniel Descalso with a home run for Colorado against Jason Mott leading that game. Yeah, it was in the ninth inning Mott was leading off or started the ninth inning. Gave up the home run to Descalzo, two more hits, then they brought in Soriano. He gave up a two run home run to Cargo. Carlos. And a ground ball that's hit to short, backhanded by Suarez. Quickly to first, and they just get gorgeous. And then Chris Bryant hit a two run home run off of Axford. 
Don't miss Fox Sports Live, a look around Major League Baseball and the 14 other games in action, including David Price on the mound in Tampa Bay. Plus, Tom Brady's suspension upheld, but it's not the end of the story. We'll explain Fox Sports Live on Fox Sports 1. Nice round of applause for Hayward. He'll be the pinch hitter for St. Louis. The do factor, 0 for 13, you do. Breaking ball on the strike. If this is indeed his final start as a red, he's going out in style. Yes, he is. I was talking with Brian Price, and I knew that Cueto had very good numbers against Pittsburgh. That's who the Reds play next. And he said, Cueto, Leak. They were the do factor. Extra bases into the right field corner and a double for Jason Hayward. On the way, Jason. But Cueto Leak and Homer Bailey all had very good numbers against the Pirates. And see this set up outside. Little breaking ball comes back to the middle and he's well stroked into the right field corner. Second double, but only the fourth hit for the Cardinals tonight. Jason now three for six as a pinch hitter this year. Here's Colton Wong who is lined out, grounded out, and a broken bat single to left field. Can make a comeback, you gotta start now. Ball inside to Colton Wong. 50th game in the leadoff spot tonight for Colton Wong. Would love to get into that bullpen. Just 90 pitches thrown by Leak, though. It's our Christmas in July promotion here at the ballpark. And Fredbert is right behind the Cardinals dugout. I bet he's nice and cool on this night with that Christmas outfit he's got on. See the pitches really hasn't labored at all. There's Fredbert, who's always cool. Wong with a fly ball. Deep right field. Hamilton back, and he's got it on the track. Hayward did not tag up. He's standing at second base. He was halfway, and then by the time he realized it was going to be caught, you could see Billy Hamilton was motioning and calling off Bruce that he could call, he was going to catch that ball. Jason needed to read it a little bit better and be over third base. Just keep on going there, and then by the time. You know, he was going when he was camped underneath it, and he should be at third base right now. It brings in Matt Carpenter. He struck out and grounded out twice, hitless in three plate appearances this evening. Leak is at 92 pitches. The reason you say you get at leak now is Chapman is getting loose in the pen. And whether or not you like the Cincinnati Reds, watching that man pitch is a sight. Right. And and I mean when it, you know you can be in trouble when Chapman comes in, but it's a challenge. But you'd like to have got into say Hoover who's warming up ahead of Chapman. The bullpen of the Reds, 20 losses. By their relief core, and that's most in the big leagues. And that's why we say that, you know, bridging the gap from starter to Chapman has been very difficult for the Reds. A lot of losses in between there. And when they get rid of Cueto and then Homer Bailey's hurt, and then you got Leak. Remember, they traded Latos and Simon. And you got all these young kids, and they're going through that growing pains of throwing too many pitches and only going about five innings per start. Here's an 0-2. Carpenter strikes out for the second time tonight. Three this evening for Mike Leak. Will he finish what he started?
the inning with Joey Votto leading it off and then Todd Frazier and Jay Bruce. Three nothing Cincinnati as Chapman is getting loose in the pen. He continues to throw out it gives you the indication you would assume that Chapman has got the ninth. You would think so and. As you mentioned Mike Leak is eight solid innings shut out baseball and then you turn it over to. Almost lights out closer in Chapman who is another red rumored to be on the move. Inside to Votto. Votto is two for 11 against Randy Schott. So now the last four starts if he is done tonight for leak is Hayward stays in the game. 30 innings to earn. Scotty moves to first base and runnels over to third so Schultz in Carpenter's two hole. One and two the key blast in this game if you just joined us three run homer. With two outs by Votto. Of Jaime Garcia back in the sixth inning. It was a walk to Phillips borderline pitch. Jaime thought he had strike three didn't go his way. Votto came up rest is history. Joey Votto hits it the other way. And it's a base hit he's thinking two on his way to second with a double. Three hits and a walk. For Joey Votto the triple away from the yeah. cycle. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. So Randy Choate comes in to face Botto and a bloop double down the third base line. Sokolovich coming on when we come back. Our score here at Bush Stadium three to nothing top of the ninth runner at second base nobody out. And our crowd tonight of forty one thousand four hundred and sixty six. Four one four six six. Miguel Sokolovich our Chevy call to the pen back to back games for him. And another example of a. Cardinal reliever not one of the. Late inning guys but. Uh, He's 20th appearance. He's four and one on the year with a 1.66 ERA. Opponents are batting 207 against him. He's never faced the Reds in his career. Here's Frazier. It was a base hit tonight. Hit into a double play, and also struck out. 
fouled back. Real key for Sokolovic to get ahead in the count. And then these Reds have never seen that change up. And he's got a good slider too. That little guy catch that ball by himself. May have. Yeah, big smile on his face. Well, we're told his uh, his mom helped out a little bit, but he's pretty happy. Got a cool mom, right? Catch the ball for you. The one-one pitch to Todd Frazier. Hit out of play. There's that change up right there. And Minnesota has come back with a run. They're tied 3 3. Pittsburgh and the Twins. It's in the top of the seventh. Cardinals, right now, a chance to really separate themselves inside this division because of all the games here at home. Nice play to his left, Reynolds. We heard so much about the bat of Reynolds. All or nothing. And the one thing I've really been surprised with, he has defense. played good defense. Yeah, he's got soft hands, and, you know, he came up as a third baseman. Uh, we've seen him play the most there lately, you know, last year or two. He's used the first base also, and he's done a nice job at both places. It keeps the runner at second base now with one out. Here's Jay Bruce. Cardinals will have the heart of the order coming up. Holiday, Peralta, and Molina. Hit to the right side, base hit. The arm of Hayward, let's see it. Let's it fly to the plate offline. Run scores, and it's four to nothing. RBI for Bruce. Number 55, and he's one for four tonight. Where Hayward, you know, just coming out there to play defense the last time, really didn't have a lot of extended. You, know, you make your your tosses it when the pitcher's warming up, but you really don't get your arm ready to make a tough throw like this. So Otto tippetoeing around third, but to throw a little bit offline, you can see the the force he had behind it is now he had to kind of just jump, hits him in the midsection. One out. Here's Suarez. Well, you wonder if Arolas Chapman still comes in this game with a four-run lead. Well, you see, uh, looks like Hoover has gotten back up, so maybe Hoover will start the inning now that it's no longer a save, and he gets in trouble. Then Chapman to back him up. Cardinals 37 and 13 here at home. In the midst of 20 of 26 here at Bush Stadium. And against some clubs that they should dominate against. I mean, think about it if Chapman is gone, Cueto already gone, and Leak is gone with all the games remaining the Cardinals have with Cincinnati. They see the Reds a bunch in the final two months. So the problem is, Dan, you know what? How the Cardinals have struggled against young pitchers that they haven't seen. And you wonder if that becomes a factor. Of course, for the guy they know quite a bit about, Mike Leak, they haven't been able to do anything. And you might see Mike Leak get a chance to go out there and finish this game now, too, that it's no longer a safe situation. And a fly ball lifted into right. Hayward makes the catch for out number two. Mike Leak has three career complete games, one this season. And that one this year was a game that he lost 2 1 to Adam Wainwright. Well, you saw that, you know, he's sitting there, and a lot of times, you know, you've gone eight innings and they're I'm already congratulating him. You aren't going to restart him because it's not a safe situation, but. Sitting there on the bench, maybe they haven't told him yet. Tucker Barnhart with a fly ball lifted into right. 
Hayward under it. Reds add to their lead. 4 nothing as we move to the bottom of the ninth. AT&T Uber's Rewind and Joey Votto the key hit in this game with two outs two on and a home run three run shot as Votto picked up home run number 19 RBI's 49 50 and 51 that made it three to nothing moments ago the Reds tacked on another run four to nothing and a roll as Chapman is in for the Cincinnati Reds he's 20 of 21 in saves only 29 hits allowed this year, 74 strikeouts. He's the fastest in the history of baseball to get to 500. And our Chevy called to the pin. Danny has lost four games. You know, he's won three, lost four. And not a lot of encouragement there when you see what the Cardinal first three to face him, what they've done. But we saw the do factor with Hayward. Mike Leak, a chance to pick up a win. And now against St. Louis, he had the start in late April. Combine that with what he's done tonight. 16 innings, eight hits allowed, only two earned for Mike Leak against the Cardinals this year. It would be nine and five, and CRA would be 3.56. Jay Bell. Very well could be his final start as a red. Chapman trying to finish it off. And Holiday hits it out of play. Seems weird to see Jay Bell in a or, you know, not in a pirate uniform. Or a diamondback or a uniform. Diamondback. Like to see him in a red uniform. Good baseball man. Holiday is grounded out, struck out, and flight out. Outfield very deep. Big gap in the left side of the outfield. Dialed that one up to 99. Not surprising to hit 102, 103 on the gun when you're watching Chapman. Was it at the All Star game through like 13 pitches over 100 miles an hour? It's amazing. Here's an 0 2 pitch. Hit to first, and Botto will take it for the first out. Let's turn to our player of the game presented by Budweiser. And it's Mike Lake, the starter for the Cincinnati Reds. 95 pitches. Very good. Last four starts. 4 0. ERA well under one. And where will he be next week? Now, I mentioned this earlier the Cardinals 4 1 on this homestand. They've hit just over 200. Yeah. The, the pitching has just been so good. And if it wasn't this good, there'd be more, more focus, I think, on the lack of offense with the team. Exactly, but 
I think we're all confident to think that the Cardinals are not going to have a collapse. They're going to get to postseason. But if they're doing this poorly against you know, not the elite pitching, what happens when you go to postseason? How long can they go in postseason? You know, not scoring many runs. And will the pitching continue to be historic? Couple of off speed pitches for Peralta. So you're a hitter, you're gearing up for triple digits. And he's coming at you with off speed stuff, off speed at 86 miles an hour. That's it. You've got to go look for the fastball, and it's almost impossible to dial it down for you know his off speed stuff. 1 1 pitch. There was again, yeah. and he left that one up. Left it up, a little more hittable, and Johnny hit it well. 20 and two thirds, six hits, no runs, 35 strikeouts in his last 20 games against St. Louis. Did he hurt himself? I think Barnhart saw something, and now Suarez. That put a monkey wrench in people's plans, huh? Ryan Price doesn't seem to be concerned. Here's our buddy Schumacher. He leads the major leagues in pinch hits this year. 13. 13. Got five doubles. Almost tripped over the rosin bag. Something does not look no. right after that last pitch. And he hasn't thrown a fastball yet to Peralta. Well, I guess he's all right. <laughs> Way to go, Dan. <laughs> Good on report. the gun. <laughs> Maybe he had to just relax and think about it for a minute to get up to 100. Look at that ball just take off upstairs. Everything's just fine. Nothing to see here, Al. But you just look <laughs> at how slow. Quite different pace from Mike Leak. Two outs, nobody on. And again, another off speed pitch. He just get the feeling, and it sounds crazy at this level, that he wants to go out there and work on something he can, and then when it's time to dial it up, no problem. You can throw 98 to 102, 3. I guess you can do pretty much what you want. Yeah, I'm being serious. Well, and, and I mean, the thing is, too, is psychologically, you know, a hitter is somewhat defeated just by the reputation. One ball, one strike on Yadier Molina. 0 for 3 tonight. Slowly hit to first, and the Reds will take game two, our final four to nothing. Big night for Joey Votto and the Cincinnati Reds. I think the best thing about this is we got Jaime Garcia back. He pitched very well the first five innings, just allowed one hit, tired a little bit in the sixth inning, gave up the three run home run. But uh, the Cardinals, the offense still is concerning. Cardinals with just four hits tonight. The Reds had seven. One of them, the difference in the game. Joey Votto's three-run homer. Four-nothing the final. Post-game show is next.